yeah, this can's pooched. But, I'm taking advantage. That's about as much as I'm gonna get. And then if I push that in, Fasten it, fasten the bottom up while that stuff cures. That would be nice if I could with some tape or something. Just around here. Oops, wants to pull off. Well, I gotta be here for a while anyway because I gotta let the stuff cure. <laughs> And I'm charging the Dyson as well. So I get some tape. I think I'm gonna go grab some tape here quick, guys. So I'll be right back. Aluminum tape to the rescue. Let's see. So when that cures, that should lock that panel in place and I can remove the tape. Good stuff. Oh, oh. Look how much this has expanded, guys, over here. <laughs> oh my god. Look at that. Low expansion, I don't know. That's quite a bit coming out. A lot. But that... It, I like it because it, it'll just find all the nooks and crannies and just completely cover coat them. This one has the uh, this one has not done that yet though, so I didn't use that much foam, but came out a little bit there, which is okay. And I can also in the future run a bead, continue a bead all the way up this seam though it wouldn't look very pretty or silicone and just to uh, you know give it the extra but uh, this can is done it's not gonna get any more and I can kind of see you guys can kind of see me in the reflection I'm waving and just check this oh yeah it worked well that's great. So, four dollars did quite a bit of uh, fixing up that entranceway. And then the thermal pan I got from work for free. These two pieces, and we can use the scrap for other jobs and stuff. And I can actually use some of that scrap to repair this bastard down here who wants to continue to be my pain. Now, I'm gonna tighten the camera up here guys so give me a second okay that's as tight as I can get it actually so I did shove these up and they have stayed 
but this one's kind of wet rotting so I can replace those panels with the ones I have and then that's mosquito nest and so is this one he's got a uh, landlord put a bunch of tires up here I mentioned that and uh, yeah nasty there's my solar I love it absolutely love it and those racks worked out perfect so there'll be more of that in the future guys for sure but uh, that's it for this video guys hope you enjoyed I got some some stuff done my hair looks like crap I got some stuff done at the tiny house and uh, uh, I have yet to buy the garbage bin for my garbage container in the tiny house I need that I need a comfortable chair would be nice um, uh, what else? Oh yeah, ceiling. I gotta get a bunch of plywood. Get this ceiling underway. Two by fours and plywood. Um, that'll be fun. And I won't get 12 footers, I'll get eights because I'll, that'll match my, uh, uh, plywood panels and uh, hopefully they don't sag too much in the middle I'm just worried about that because they're only going to be fastened on the ends so they're they're light but any weight is going to be you know they're kind of going to be um, obviously concave in the middle but uh, yeah this stuff's hardening up there's that piece that was sticking on the bottom of the tiny house I just pulled that guy off so he's starting to harden up let's check on these guys see if these guys are done they're starting to they're they're still a little soft I'll wait till these things get I'll probably give them 24 hours or more and then take a nice sharp knife just cut down here nice and flush and that'll kind of eliminate a lot of the air infiltration other than the gap in the door but you don't want the tiny house too tight especially uh, down the road when I'm thinking about getting a small wood stove for in here and uh, the nice thing about the wood stove idea is it's going to save me on propane but I'm going to buy a small one so I do not have to dampen down the dampers on the wood stove the air intake on the wood stove ever I'll leave it on full burn all the time that'll help with stop creosote from building up and also that air hole that's just over here um, in the floor I think it's just under this rug or under this uh, you guys see that there it is back there that will be a nice air intake I'll have to pipe um, with some plumbing pipe or something some cold air as my air intake for the wood stove so it's taking outside air for combustion and not um, starving the tiny house of air in the winter time which is important take some nice cool air from out from underneath the tiny house bring it up and it will naturally be sucked into the combustion chamber of the fireplace once I get one and hook all that up. Also, it'll be an expensive task too, guys, to get a wood stove because I have to buy cement board and then drill a hole in the ceiling for the vent pipe or I think yeah I think I'm gonna go straight up into the ceiling with the um, exhaust I won't go out and up um, though that, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be too bad actually if I went out and then up um, though I need a I'm gonna make sure I use all the proper stuff the double wall pipe and stuff like that but that's a lot of money to spend I don't I don't have that right now I I have to get all my other priorities done like the ceiling 
And then if I have to take the ceiling panel down before installing the wood stove, I will. I probably, I'll probably have to open up a section of the ceiling just for the wood stove to have clearance anyway. So I should be able to continue with the wood stove idea. I don't even know where it's going to go if I do get it. But it would be a really nice idea. And then the one I'm looking at is, um, uh, it's called, what is it called? It's made in Quebec. And it's one of those mini wood stoves. And I was thinking because, you know, wood is, wood is pretty scarce around here. Um, like, I don't know, it's, it's not scarce, and it is, like, I can, basically, I can buy a bag of wood stove pellets and burn those cheaper than I can actual huge chunks of wood that I would then have to process down to the small to feed the small stove that I'm looking at getting. And I believe it's only two to three inch diameter exhaust pipe on this thing, which is unbelievable. And uh, like I say though, I don't, I'm gonna have it on full burn all the time. And the reason for that is um, less chance of creosote building up. And if I burn the processed wood pellets that are dried already, really no chance of getting creosote built up because it'll be a hot long burn no um green wood in that in that process whatsoever no like uh everything will be seasoned obviously so and the bags are relatively cheap guys they're like six bucks no five bucks a bag and if i experiment um, and get get everything set up. Let's say I get everything set up and experiment see how many bags it would take for me to last through a winter season um, And then have maybe supplemental um, propane at when I'm not there That way because I burning a wood stove when you're not there guys mm. Kind of dicey. I don't want to burn down the tiny house. So um but that's another benefit of the smaller wood stove. You can stock it up and then it'll be out in a couple hours. So you don't have to worry about the thing being on for five hours and you have to leave somewhere. So basically I'd only run it at um, night when I know I'm in for the night. And then it'll probably get me through till morning. And then I can throw the propane stove on or the propane fireplace on in the morning just to get me going and uh, then take off for the day and then just use it at, for the night times, the uh, nasty winter night times and that should work. And then I can, um, and they're big enough, I think I can incorporate the thermoelectric generator. But like I said, if it only goes, if it only burns for a couple hours and I'm not stocking, stoking the fire with more pellets, um, you know, it's not gonna make much power for the thermoelectric generator. Um, but I don't want to buy a big stove because I do not want to dampen the air intake down um, because that's where you get your creosote issues. Um, and I really don't need a big stove for this place, guys. This is, um, you know, the one that I was looking at can do uh, 400 square feet, which is basically um, the tiny house and now that I'm kind of closing things in a little tighter and have the radiant barrier you know I don't want to be cooking in here I kind of like it cooler myself um but you know that everybody's their own this thing's starting to get really tough good oh <laughs> these ones have wrapped around the door Oh God, <laughs> nasty. So that's the plan guys. Um, so far so good. Nice day out though, beautiful. I gotta unload the truck. Um, Cause I still have to do that. So I got tons of stuff to do. 
So I'll be here for a while letting this thing go. Letting it cure, letting the Dyson charge. I'll be uh, unloading here, cleaning some stuff up, cleaning this mess up here. But I think everything turned out pretty well. And then I'm going to leave these thermal pan pieces in my trailer to maybe do some uh, fixing on the far end of the tiny house at, where those nasty ones got hit. Um, and then I'm, I definitely got to get some silicone to top those things off just so I think I know what's going on. As the, at the end of the tiny house, it kind of goes flat, flat piece of metal. So when the rain comes down, it probably rolls around that corner and travels this way underneath the tiny house onto the thermal pan and that's how they're getting wet. Because the outsides have a drip edge that I installed and it's worked perfectly for the rest of the tiny house. But the, the back side where the um, end of the trailer is, it kind of goes flat with a flat piece of metal. That's the only place the tiny house does that, except at the very front as well where they hitch on um, underneath for the transports where they slide the vehicle back underneath and it clamps on. Um, so if I run a bead of silicone on the flat part, the water will hit the silicone and drop down. That's my goal, well hopefully, and it should work. And I need it anyway to fix, put these, uh, put some clear silicone in these holes in the doorway here too, because that is not good. So, but the tiny house is looking a lot better now, guys. We're slowly getting there as the money comes in. And hopefully my YouTube continues to take off here and we get some more um, viewers and get some more stuff done. Oh, here's a couple spots here that I can fall in if there's anything left. Oh. There we go. Just some stuff under the door frame. Oh, I do have a little bit. And that's about all I need to kind of get these tiny little cracks under the door. But yeah, so far so good, guys. I think we're getting there. Actually, I'm gonna foam this, the wood here. If I have enough, I doubt it. I have a little piece of wood, which I will show you guys in a second, that the door frame is basically on. And I'm just coating like I did the side there where there was uh, the two by four showing. I'm just coating it with the rest of this uh, foam can because I'm actually am getting a little bit more and that should help. That way it's not, you know, just going in the garbage. I'll grab you guys right in a second here. Hold on. And I'll tilt you up so you can see what I'm doing. So this wood here, that the door frames, well that it's showing, I painted it and everything, but just use the rest of this can up to kind of coat it, cover it, if I can, squeeze as much out of this can as I can. Probably only get part way, but who knows. Might get lucky. Little crevices under there, fill all the little gaps. Will it make 
like this. I see that? It's ugly, boy. The entrance way, but how long are you really out here? It's kind of like an in and out thing. And I don't get too many visitors, so they can <laughs> that's not many complaints. I don't think I might get much more. That kind of sucks. 